что лишь одну ракету сорвал достаточно, чтобы его утопить раз и всегда. Все уже посчитано. Some residents are starting to fight back, seemingly fed up with the prolonged virus restrictions and food shortages. Temperatures hitting record high in the month of April, coal supplies dwindled and the region witnessed widespread power cuts. A senior Ukrainian official says his country should not sign any peace agreements with Russia. Secretary of the National Security and Defense Council Alexei Danilov said an exception can only be made for a peace deal if Russia surrenders. He also stressed that the conflict will not end soon and the turning point has not come yet. If he does anything in regards to unconventional we weapons, dealing with uh, anything like chemical weapons or any kind of strategic nukes, all bets are off. We're not going to back down to a bully. Hi folks, Canadian Prepper here. So guys, you're going to have to pardon my absence yesterday. I woke up feeling like absolute garbage fever, uh, hot, cold. I was weak. I couldn't barely get out of bed. Chest congestion, the whole nine yards. I was a mess. I don't know what the hell happened. It was hit me right away too. And uh, as fast as it came in, it seems to be subsiding now. So with the help of some over-the-counter medications propping me up, I'm able to function just enough to squeeze out a video today because uh, as we approach the zero hour, guys, time is of the essence, and uh, it appears that NATO is going to war with Russia. It's just a matter of when it's going to happen. Even the Russian people themselves, according to my sources, are starting to conceptualize it as a war with the United States and NATO. It's not just a war with Ukraine anymore or a demilitarization of Ukraine. It's a war with NATO and the United States. This is what they're viewing it as. And uh, as we approach Victory Day on May 9th, if you don't know, that was the day that the Russians declared victory over Germany in World War II. Uh, some people have speculated that they're going to declare a full-scale mobilization and declare all-out war on Ukraine. And if that happens, then uh, it's likely that uh, Kiev is going to be toast and it's going to be a different kind of war at that point. However, the Kremlin denies this. They insist that these types of uh, suggestions are nonsense and that uh, their only concern is doing their special military operation. But remember when they said that they weren't going to invade Ukraine and they just slapped that label on it, special military operation, right? So it makes me wonder what sort of euphemistic term they're going to use when they do declare all-out war on Ukraine or NATO for that matter. Um, I have an acquaintance who flies munitions for the State Department and uh, he was telling me that the shipments have ramped up quite a bit in the last couple weeks and that they're not only shipping like the javelins and stuff anymore, they're shipping like howitzer ammunition and uh, things that NATO is going to use to engage the Russians. So it's, it's not looking good, guys. And we're seeing some of the biggest military exercises ever taking place throughout the month of May. Um, Large-scale military mobilizations on the Finnish-Russian border. The Finns are sending like half of their tanks to the Russian border. And, uh, yeah, so we're seeing uh, one of the largest NATO exercises, 18,000 troops from 20-plus countries. 
uh, including about 7,000 on Polish soil. So these are uh, some of the biggest uh, military exercises that have ever taken place. And it, it's looking like the powers that be are gung-ho on getting us into a major war with Russia. And you're playing a game of chicken. It's only a matter of time before the bear bites back, man. I mean, I, I think... I think because Russia has been showing a lot of restraint with what they've been doing, and I know for some people, uh, if you're not paying attention and you're not in the know of what's going on, you're going to think, what do you mean they're showing restraint? They're, you know, leveling cities. And yes, you're right, but they're still showing restraint in terms of what they could bring to bear. Uh, they're not using any of their nuclear weapons. I mean, they have 5,000 nuclear weapons and you have Ukraine now who's demanding Moscow surrender. <laughs> Can you believe that? They're, they're, they want Moscow to surrender. So they went from wanting to negotiate a peace treaty to even making some concessions. And then they got reined in by Washington or something. And now they're starting, they're demanding that Moscow surrenders. Like, this will never happen. So that means that this war is going to go on and on and on. And uh, it's, it's only a matter of time then before Russia puts the, pushes the button. Because if NATO continuously fuels the war machine out there, the Ukrainian war machine, if they continually send uh, shipments and they try to bleed Russia dry... Well, what other option is Russia going to have but to use some of their bigger guns? And uh, it's a scary thought, but it, it seems inevitable at this point that that's where this is going to go because it, it's only escalating on every possible front. It is escalating. And uh, it's not looking good. Not looking good at all. Kiev insists the only document it will sign with Moscow is Russia's capitulation. Yeah, it's yeah, it's not looking good, guys. <sighs> uh, Germany continues to warn its population about um, preparing for the shizzy to hit the fizzy. I think we talked about that in our last video. And uh, yeah, they're worried. They're worried that uh, they're going to get nuked. I mean, how else? How else is this going to end? I mean, it's, yeah. Sorry, guys, my brain's not working today. <laughs> it's not working at all. Uh, Moldova calls for NATO forces. So Moldova, Romania is actually going to be getting a battalion of, I think the USA is sending a battalion to Romania. And Moldova is going to call up the support of the Romanians. So that's going to get them involved and so USA might engage Russia on that front, okay, the Transnistrian front. We have Belarus, who is uh, getting ready to enter the, the engagement. They're doing military exercises as well. And uh, Ukraine is getting ready for that, saying that they're ready for Belarus to participate in the invasion. Yeah, so it's not looking that good, guys. I don't have a whole lot else to say today. I'm getting a lot of messages from people who are sending me uh, pictures and talking about uh, troop movements, uh, movements of military vehicles, uh, heightened activity at military bases, stuff like that. So... Uh, if you guys have any information like that that you want to share that I can share with people, send it to CanadianPrepper at Hotmail.com. Sorry again that this video is so short today, guys. My brain just isn't working at all, and I don't want to waste your time. But uh, hopefully we brought you up to speed a little bit on what's going on. But uh, the next couple days we'll have a more detailed report for you. So I appreciate uh, you're watching and uh, take care guys. Stay safe.